Now one of the things I wanted to talk about, you, you heard me mention that um, this had 26 strings. So you can see, I'll put my hand behind you so maybe you can see the colors a little better. You can see that some of the strings are clear, but you can also see that there are red strings, and you can also see that there are blue strings. Now each one of these strings has a meaning, each one of these colors. Uh, if you go to a piano, you notice it has black keys and white keys, and that helps you know where to put your fingers. Well, these colors on the strings also help you know where to put your fingers. Um, if I was to compare the notes on this harp to the notes on a piano or keyboard, what you would immediately notice is that all of these represent the white notes of a keyboard. There are not any black notes on here. Now, the, the sharpening levers that we have here allow you to take a note, this is the C note, and give it a half step up, so that's a C sharp, okay? So that's what the levers are all about. So the levers are essentially the kind of the black keys on the piano, because the black keys on the piano are what give you the sharps as well. So um, we have just a little bit different way of doing it. Now the interesting thing is on a piano you can hit a sharp anytime you want to. With a lever harp, you, you have to reach up and hit that. So that's kind of hard to do while you're playing a song. So normally what we do is we work with accidentals and things like that. And we'll explain that as we, in some of the lessons down the, down the line. I won't go into that right now. Let's stick with the colors. The C is the red string, the C note. So C, D, E. So now you can see that the F is the blue note. So here those two, those are an octave apart. And the reds, those are an octave apart as well. So what you have is C, D, E, F, G, and then that's the last note you have. Then you go back up to the A again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and all the way on up and all the way down. So that's the way that, um, that the strings are laid out. And if you wanted to play a chord, you could start with the C and play a C chord. And then the F. Okay, so that's kind of how that works. <clears throat> now you can, by using your sharpening levers, you can tune into different keys. We'll do that another lesson as well. Um, another type of harp is slightly smaller than this one. It's called a lap harp. It usually has around 22, 21 strings. Um, one of the most beautiful lap harps I've ever seen is made by House of Harari in Israel, Mika Harari. Uh, an incredible craftsman, uses uh, exotic wood. Um, but they usually do not have the sharpening levers. Usually they're tuned just with the, with the, uh, the, in the key of C and everything, every song that you sing is played in the key of C. Now what you can do if you don't have levers is if you're going to play a, one song in a different key, you can, you can take your your tuning key and, and tune to that if you want to. But that's a lot of work, takes a lot of time. And so normally, uh, if you have a lap harp, you're going to be playing just in the key of C. Um, this harp, when I first got it, did not have the sharpening levers. I put them on later. I'll probably be putting more on, because you can see I don't have one on every string. Um, sharpening levers can be a little pricey, so that's probably why I don't have them all on right yet. <laughs> so. Anyway, um, I'll just mention that there are a couple other kinds of harps. Um, in Wales, um, they have what they call a double strung harp. And what it ha does is they have strings down coming down both sides with two different entry uh, bridge levels here. And uh, what happens with that is you have the, the white notes here and you have the black notes on the other side. And so you can play all of the sharps and flats in place all of the time. And that's an interesting. I've tried playing one one time, and it, I kind of, if I spent some time at it, I'm sure I could figure it out, but it's, it's a little bit different to, to play. But that's another kind of harp. And then Germany makes what they call a lyre, and it's similar to the double strung harp. It has the sharps and flats in it, but they're all in a row. And um, so you have all of the strings in place there. And that's, once again, a little bit... Uh, more getting used to, but you can you can do it. Um, 
We, I'll just go through the little bit of the structure of the harp. You have, this is called the tiller, and this takes a lot of the weight of the strings pulling down. This is called the neck, or harmonic curve, and this is where all of the pins are placed. These are the pins, and they turn and tighten the string to get it to the tune you want. This is called a bridge pin here. This is what the string comes over into the, into the pin to tighten it. This is set at a, the right distance so that you get the right tone on the string. If you move this up or down, the tone would be different. And that's essentially what the, harp, what the sharpening lever does, is when you push that up, you can see that that comes in, gauges the string, so it really shortens the string. So now the string's gonna be higher. Okay, and you put that down and it's, it's back lower. So you just, with the sharpening lever, you made a shorter string. It's kind of like having the frets on the guitar. Um, when you push your finger on that fret, that shortens the string. So it, these are kind of similar type of concepts going on here. Now the one nice thing I like about the harp is that you have all of your strings in place all of the time. And when you're playing... There's these notes that I played, but if you listen very carefully, especially if we had an amplifier, you would hear all of these other subtle notes going on at the same time that these are being played. When I play one, pluck one string, if I, if I feel another string, you can feel it vibrating a little bit. So there's all of these subharmonics, and I believe that's one of the most beautiful aspects of the harp, is all of the extra sound that's coming out of it. I know when I record a CD, especially if it's somebody new that hasn't recorded me before, they get a little bit, up, um, little bit concerned about all of the sounds that are coming out of the harp because they, they're used to being very specific about what notes are being played, and the harp has so many things going on at all, the, all the time. So it's interesting to go through the process of, of, um, of mastering the sounds because I, I try to encourage them to keep more of those sounds in there because it's very unique to the harp. The, um, we've talked about the sharps and the flat. Oh, the other thing is now what we have here is the sound box here. This is, uh, this is where the sound is coming out of. The harp is made so that the holes, like uh, the holes on a guitar, are coming out the back. So the sound, a lot of the sound is coming out the back of the harp. Another aspect of, this, of the harp is that the, this, this front here, this is called, um, I'll take this off so you can show, I'm not sure if it's going to show up on the video, but if you look down here you'll see this has a curve to it, and that's actually supposed to be there, that's called the belly of the harp, and if you just play along here you'll, you'll hear a lot of resonance. Just in, so what's happening is this top of the soundboard is acting like a drum head, the strings are coming through it, so when the string is played, there's vibration on here, and that helps accentuate the sound as well. So the harp is really um, one of the most lively instruments for sound. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I like it so well. Um, it just has, there's just so much sound to it. And down the road, one of the lessons that we do, I'm going to be talking about uh, frequencies and resonance and even the effects on the body. I've done a lot of playing the harp in the hospital and um, it there's a lot of um, I could just tell you story after story of, of benefits from listening to the harp music and healing in the body so I won't take a lot of time right now but I just want you to know you'll, you'll notice a lot of music therapists in hospitals are using harps. Harps is a and we go clear back in scripture to David when it said that troubling spirit came on the King Saul that they found David and had him come play the harp and when he began to play this, that troubling spirit would leave. And so uh, I think that's, you know, that's kind of where I started thinking about taking the harp into the hospital and ever since I've done that it's been some amazing stories have come out of that. I won't, um, I'm just going to Another thing that the harp is really unique for is what they call the glissade, which is when you just run your fingers over the strings like this. And, you know,
know, that's kind of the angel music, you know. So, um, another thing is what's called the appreggio, even on the piano. And it's when, appreggio is when you extend the chord out. Let's just take this C chord and you go. And actually, in, in the Italian language, appreggio means harp. <laughs> Arpeggio. So anyway, um, so when, when you're playing the pan piano and you're playing an arpeggio, you're playing a harp technique, is what that's talking about. Um, now, I don't want to spend a lot more time this lesson. This lesson is just about getting you oriented to the harp. Um, as we've covered the strings, the octave placements, uh, we talked just a little bit about chords. Like we're going to learn how to do chords in the next another lesson. I think it's the uh, third lesson. Uh, next lesson, we're going to talk about how to tune a harp. A, a harp is probably one of the reasons why a lot of people don't play harps. I think maybe because you are spending a lot of time tuning. Fortunately, today we have electronic tuners, and that really helps the process out. So I'll be exposing you to that next on the next lesson. Um, like I said, I want you to be able to um, take up a harp and be able to hear music in your mind and your heart and put them on the strings and be able to play that music. I've been working also with bringing some of the music out of the Psalms of David and we'll share some of that with you as we go as well. The harp is a beautiful instrument. I um, have built quite a few harps for people around the country. One of the reasons why I'm doing these lessons on YouTube is because I have not been able to put enough time into teaching these different harps that I've put out there. So I'm hoping that you will be listening to these YouTubes and learning as we go. The harp is an incredible instrument. I hope that you take the time to uh, learn to enjoy it, to learn to play it. I also, one last thing I'll say is, is if you're a professional harpist and you watch my finger placements, you're going to say, oh, you're, you're not doing the right fingering. And my answer to that is, um, first of all, uh, when I was playing for William Reese up at, when I bought this harp, I was playing along and he said, oh, you're playing the French trained way. Your thumbs are down. And I said, oh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> um, so apparently there are different, even classical ways of, of learning, of fingering. So, um, but what I want to stress is, it's a lot, I believe, and somebody would probably disagree with me, but I believe it's more important to be comfortable on the harp, to not be so concentrated on what your fingers are doing, and, and you know, some, some women I've watched play have beautiful hand movements as they're playing the harp, and I, I frankly don't, uh, so don't watch my hands, just listen to the music, but the music is what's really what I really want to come from you. I want to get you to a point where you can can hear either something a, a tune that you like and and work it out and play it in a way that you like it and add embellishments and things to it, or even hear something in your heart or in your mind that you go like, "Wow, that's kind of a neat little tune. I've never heard that before. Let me see if I can play that and start working that out." And that's where we're going. And I hope that's where you want to go because. Um, to me, that's the that's the the wonderful thing about the harp. Um, normally, when I play for a wedding or something, I'll be sitting down and playing for two, three hours sometimes, and I'm just playing out of my heart. I'm not playing. I don't have sheet music in front of me, and I believe that that's um, that allows you the freedom, and that's what I want to give you is the freedom to play the harp, to have beautiful music come forth, to be able to put these frequencies in the air to possibly take it into the hospitals and play at bedside. I can't go to all the hospitals. I hope that I can teach enough people that more and more are out there um, doing this. So uh, that's enough for today. I think I've given you enough to think about. I think that um, I hope that I've given you just whetted your appetite to to want to come back to the next lesson. and. Uh, this is going to be a wonderful journey. I, I, I'm glad you're joining me, and uh, we'll see you soon in the next lesson, too. Thank you.